go back down memory lane, that's for sure. Thinking about coming here today. I was uh, 31 years old. We're just planning on having kids. I was 12 years old. I just started at a new high school. I was a really, like, energetic and sporty girl. I was at my mother's house um, and I thought I was just stressed from work. It was just, you know, a couple of occasional really bad headaches. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I wouldn't be able to breathe properly. I remember one day on a building site, uh, I had a, like a six pack of Gatorade in the space of an hour and I was still thirsty. I remember constantly eating to the point where I was so full, but I still felt hungry. I need to go to the toilet every five minutes. To the point where I could no longer take a 20 minute bus ride. I couldn't stand up, I was uh, really nauseous. I realised something was wrong when I'd lost about 14 kilos in about 10 days. 12 kilos in about three weeks. Now, I remember being formally diagnosed by the endocrinologist. It's where they diagnosed me with type 1 diabetes. I just remember crying when I heard the news. I didn't really understand it, <laughs> what it would be like, but I knew it wouldn't be good, so... I felt very overwhelmed. I was diagnosed with type 1 at 19. My grandmother, who had type 1, had passed only two years before from complications of diabetes. I was a bit nervous of, like, if it was going to hurt or not. He struggled quite a bit. He was in the ICU unit in the hospital. I would have to get up, and I just couldn't. I was unconscious for 18 hours. The doctor finally sort of explained it in a kid way. I just immediately started crying. I thought only children got type 1. Wondering how I was going to be telling people for the rest of my life that I was diabetic and what did that even mean because I didn't know what that meant at the time. I told, you know, my partner and I knew that, you know, this was not just going to be on me but it was kind of going to be on him forever. Ah, uh, um... Well, everything just stopped, you know. I was told that I was very close to either having a heart attack or stroke, and I was only 21. I actually had to go and speak to a, a psychologist. I think being a, a, an Aussie bloke, you don't really talk about that sort of stuff too much. I can't go to friends' houses or um, go on camps and stuff, I can't go without a parent because the teachers have so many other students to look after. I've had diabetes now for over 50 years and that has meant that I've had to manage my blood glucose in a range, neither too low because things go wrong and neither too high because longer term complications can emerge. I didn't realise I'd have to be injected myself for the rest of my life. Before you eat, before you do sport. Have I taken enough insulin? Have I not taken enough insulin? Have I exercised too much? Am I stressed? It is one of the things I think about every half hour, every hour of every day. Diabetes has had a massive impact on my life. There's a lot of thinking and anxiety that goes on before you go to sleep. She wakes up freaking out and having to lean over and check that I'm breathing. My mum would sleep with me through the night and you know, make me not feel lonely. My mum still texts me every morning to see if I'm awake. She'd go down and, you know, look around the corner when I was kicking the footy with my mates just to make sure that I was safe and healthy. Because now your child has this extra burden, these extra problems and complications that no one needs in life. My grandparents, my nana, definitely was impacted and to this day she's, it breaks her heart that I do have it. It has made me and my parents and my brothers, who they are. It's like we all got diabetes. You know, can you have children? Is that whole process going to be harder? I've got two little kids. You know, what's their risk of developing diabetes? I would hate to think that I could, I could pass that on to another little person. If you don't take care of your blood sugars and manage your levels within like an appropriate range, you can get uh, damage in your retina, for example, and you can go blind. Things such as uh, kidney damage. I don't want to like not be able to walk because I've lost my leg. It sucks. Like it's so bad, um, especially when you're trying to play and train for court time, and you're there and you're like, I've got diabetes and this is uh, holding me back. When I get lower, I get really tired, 
and I just don't have any energy to do anything. Because it seems like you're lazy to other people just because you can't get up and you have no energy. My heart starts beating fast and then like I just get very shaky and there's like butterflies in my stomach. I was walking up George Street and uh, collapsed. My first really bad low, I, it was in the middle of the night and I remember stepping up uh, from my bed, checking my blood sugar and then waking up later on the floor and it had been probably a couple of hours. I thought I was dying. <laughs> Um, it was the first time I really felt mortal, like death was knocking on the door. Everyone says type 1 diabetes is the invisible disease. You know, you look at me and I just look like a middle-aged businessman. Uh, you don't know that I'm constantly running mental calculations. A lot of people didn't believe that I had diabetes. Um, they had the stigma of, oh, but you're healthy, you, you train, you exercise. People look at you and say, oh, you're diabetic, but you're not fat. They think, oh, you know, it's just a few injections you've got to take every now and then, but it's actually a constant daily struggle. It's still a chronic disease, and I think a lot of people don't realise that. To the point where you're getting bullied for a genetic illness that you're going to have for the rest of your life, that I found really rough. It's a constant, like, it's so hard. Um, oh, a bit emotional. Um, <laughs> So it's tough on the diabetics, it's tough on the families, the constant worry. The diabetes technology uh, has had a huge impact. There are, are so many and so many rapid changes in technology going on that are improving how you can manage your diabetes. It's made my life so much better and so much easier. To be able to have something telling you every five minutes what your level's doing, that for me was like a hallelujah moment. The pump, like that's just a game changer. The continuous monitoring, like crazy. But now I feel brave so I can do it by my own at school. To celebrate my 50th year of type one, I decided I'd run a marathon. And I thought at that time that continuous glucose monitor would be the greatest single help. I was able to uh, compete in a race um, over in Hawaii, something that I, I didn't think I was going to do when I didn't have diabetes, <laughs> and then I'd do it with diabetes. I haven't had to have needles seven times a day. My parents aren't so tired at night because they're not having to get up and out of bed. Maybe you can give yourself some insulin. No. Yeah. Yep. How much? Let's have a look. If we found a cure for type 1 diabetes, that would be the best day of my life. That's quite emotional because no one's ever asked me that. Or even said that to me, so... <sighs> I'd give anything to... to feel normal again. Yeah, yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> I don't have the words for it, it'd just be... Mind-blowing, actually. It, it, it could actually it'd be the best thing that could possibly happen in, in, the, in the world. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do to celebrate. Oh, probably the whole cake. I mean. <laughs> eat a massive slice of cake. Chocolate milk, I haven't had that in years. Oh, good gracious. Yeah. Um, well, McFlurry wouldn't go down too bad. Oh, stop. I would probably throw a party and... Um, I would run out this room and do cartwheels. I can picture it. <laughs> It'd be amazing. I look forward to that day. <laughs>